Hello, I'm Rob Hirschfeld, CEO and co-founder of RackN, and this is my discussion for GlueCon 2023 about generative DevOps and the rise of the 10x operators and how that threatens cloud providers. There's a lot to cover, including my experimentation with ChatGPT for DevOps, so let's dive right in. When I talk about the rise of the 10x operators, I think it's actually important to step back and understand why me? Why RackN? What are we looking at for this? Why is our expertise specifically valuable for thinking about a 10x operator? RackN is an infrastructure as code automation software company. That's a lot. Basically, we provide DevOps scaffolding that helps people run their own infrastructure. And that's important because we are working to empower operators to run their own infrastructure, to be independent, run their own clouds, run their own bare metal. Uh, using clouds also, those are, those are amazing resources, but fundamentally keeping operators in control. And so we spend a lot of time asking ourselves why operators aren't in control. What's holding people back from running their own infrastructure, from doing this themselves? And when we look at the market, what we see is that there's a surplus of equipment types, networking, storage, switches, um, compute, uh, edge compute. It's, it's a huge variety with a lot of different vendors. And the amount of documentation that's available for here alone can be overwhelming. Also, the fact that we've built so many different tools, all these silos, make things challenging. And there's a lot of silos that our customers have to deal with. And then we keep inventing new architectures. We keep having variations in architectures rather than repeatable patterns that we can, we can just use. And these things make it really hard for operators. At the same time, there's a huge lack of reusability where people are reinventing the wheel over and over again, where we're looking at having challenges, even knowing if what we built was correct because we don't have the validation or linting to understand what's going on where we build new things but don't worry about backwards compatibility and then we wonder about the resilience of systems where they're not very good at dealing with change or system components and none of this actually has a good system-wide architecture this shared state model that allows us to plug together operations those silos really keep us from building a system-wide view of what things are going. So operators have a lot to deal with. It's not surprising that they're so challenged. And so we really wanted to know, and Rackin is studying this more broadly, how ChatGPT and other generative systems can actually impact operators, right? Can ChatGPT make a difference in DevOps? And, and DevOps is the narrowing of the scope, but I think it's relevant because definitely is one of the biggest challenge areas that we see in the market. And so as I played with GPT-4, I asked it to do things like build scripts, create Ansible, create Terraform, do that work. And as expected, it did a really good job of building those scripts. I was able to prompt it to improve those scripts and then refactor those systems. I expected that when I started this process, so there wasn't really that much uh, to know, although I do have to say I was surprised that the quality of the output that GPT created was better. I was expecting a lot of hallucinations or places where the scripts didn't work or clearly lacked the expertise, but the system was actually building good DevOps capabilities and scripts. The other thing that I was surprised about is how easy it was for me to take a script that looked good in one format and convert it to another format. Uh, Terraform to Bash was one of my favorite. We use a lot of Bash and being able to directly call CLI calls and have a Bash script instead of a highly abstracted Terraform script actually is a useful thing to do when you're looking at why something works or how it works under the covers. And asking ChatGPT to summarize documentation or summarize code or scripts or playbooks that have been written, Terraform plans, and give me a summary of what had happened it was incredibly good at doing that work and producing reasonable summaries for me. In some cases, learning how to prompt it better to ask for different summaries in different ways produced uh, surprisingly good and powerful results. Even things like asking ChatGPT to think about something as a cat. Um, 
And I was delighted that ChatGPT actually did a really good job explaining the scripts to me. So I could read the scripts, but ChatGPT added a dimension of analysis to me that was really, really helpful. Uh, finding alternatives in what I could do. Actually, using ChatGPT as a mentor or to discover alternatives, look at different ways of doing things, make recommendations, even planning operations. If I could, add, when I asked GPT, how do, how should I go about this work? What things should I consider? What steps should I use? Uh, ChatGPT actually gave me very good results. Now they weren't a substitute for my expertise, but they definitely augmented it and helped me down the path further and faster. And so the obvious conclusion here is that if you already know DevOps, this will enhance your, your productivity without a doubt. One thing that really stuck out to me is this platforming, this replatforming uh, example that I gave. And I want to drill into that a little bit before I talk about larger, larger ramifications, because I think that this is typical of the surprising results that we can see. So I can start with a request to create a Terraform plan and I can reprompt to build a better and better Terraform experience here. And then I can take that and ask ChatGPT to convert that. And it could start be starting from a Terraform plan I, already, I had built or I had working already and then convert it into another format. For me to see the real power of this, I actually asked it to decompose it into raw CLI commands. Then I asked it to turn those CLI commands into a bash script, and then I had it templatize the bash script to make it more portable, easier to use, and add into other tools and platforms. That whole experience produced very good results and was incredibly fast. The impact here is not that I think you should convert all of your Terraform to bash. It's actually that we can use these tools, these generative tools, to take away lock-in. If you have something that works in one format, converting to another format is incredibly straightforward and powerful. And that in itself allows us as DevOps professionals to build scripts much faster, to take working code and translate it, to take ideas and put them into systems that we understand or review or break a high level abstraction into primitives, convert uh, instructions into Python if we prefer Python as a, as a management system, convert Ruby into Python if we want very easily and quickly, to really get into taking uh, something that has to be at a human level abstraction and then working closer to a machine level for it and then counting on ChatGPT to be able to explain it back to us or transform it back into a higher level function that we can understand. It really is a, a tremendous way to relook at how we interact with systems and automation. But that's way down in the weeds. I want to zoom out because I think it's important to understand that these tools do work. And it is not just knowledge that we're capturing here. There is actually a significant degree of expertise in using these systems that we bring, but also that is it being exposed in our use of these tools. And so when I look at it from that perspective, it makes me very, very aware that the cloud operations excellence is the moat. We have been pitched for a long time that the reason why the clouds are important is not that they're cheaper. They are not cheaper than running your own infrastructure, but that they are actually better at running that infrastructure than you are. And they usually say could ever be. And with what's going on in AI right now, we have to question that. We have to think through, is the expertise and the potential to work more effectively changing the game in what it takes to operate infrastructure? Can we reduce that mode? And so for, to do that, we have to think through what is expertise. If you, and the analogy I like to talk about in this is comparing you to a Cordon Bleu chef. Because you have the same ingredients. We have access to the same uh, supplies. We can get pots and knives and burners. Uh, you know, maybe not an industrial kitchen, but the real difference is, is not that material. The difference is really the expertise. The chef has the expertise in the moment to understand how to cook, what's going to happen next, how the systems interact, what the flavor profiles are. 
you can learn how to do the cooking if you have the available expertise in the time you're doing it. And so what I would encourage you to do is think through this cooking analogy as if the AI was not just helping you complete tasks, not just being a robot, but actually providing the situational expertise to help you improve your outcomes. That type of one-on-one -on -one engagement, actually using all this information and then providing a better system is a way to think through how AI changes the outcomes for running and managing infrastructure as an operator. You suddenly have available and contextual help to do tasks and perform operations, whether that's writing a script or actually troubleshooting a significant outage or other problem. The capabilities here, at, even at the very early stages, and we are very early here, are already enough that having basically a wing person as an AI is a significant operational advantage. If this doesn't make sense to you or you think I'm stretching it too far, I really suggest you take a look at, at Sal Khan's TED Talk about how uh, Khan Academy is using ChatGPT to actually build one-on-one -on -one tutoring. Rather than just providing answers, it's actually providing one-on-one -on -one tutors and instruction. It's a really mind-opening discussion because it changes the way I thought about uh, ChatGPT and its interactions to go from being an answer provider to a mentor and assistant. And so when I took my personal experience and my research here, I came away with some really significant uh, insights for operators, right? This is DevOps, generative DevOps, and how it can change what we do. I see a very quickly approaching time when the tools that we're using are not required to focus on humans. This goes back to my, I could use Bash and CLI instead of relying on Terraform to do something. We don't need to read as much documentation. We often hear as Rack N that it's not that we don't have documentation. We actually have more documentation that you need than, than people need. But finding the appropriate piece of information at the time you need it is absolutely critical. And we can change that dynamic with AI. Understanding what people are doing in the moment, providing exactly the right information that people need to make decisions, and then adding the consultative approach based on real data and documentation. It can be a game changer to get that the information we have available to people. And then I expect that we're going to start using AI and GPT to troubleshoot. It isn't like an ML ops or uh, uh, robot, robot process automation or things like that where we're actually just analyzing logs better, but actually saying, oh, I'm, I'm experiencing this problem, analyze the results that I'm seeing and tell me what I should be processing. Sort of doing that first pass analysis. Uh, that is tremendously powerful, but it also means that we can start providing information through logs and data and output that we know is going to be processed by, by machines. So it could have more details, more information, and then count on the AI to quickly sift that to find that needle in the haystack and provide us with reasonable information, that summary power. There are challenges here. It's, it's not all uh, upsides. It really is on the users to understand what is important. The AI still don't do a particularly good job of finding the important details in your system. They might find important details in documentation or logs or things like that, but people really do have to sift through and understand the broader context of what's going on. Prompting skills, uh, this is well understood at this point, but your, un your ability to prompt and ask the right questions is absolutely essential or ask for the right refinements or explore and play and then ask Ch ChatGPT how it's doing. Um, and then the other thing that I think a lot of us are concerned about is for the people who are coming next, who are, who are using these systems as their first experience, how are they building their own level of expertise? How are we building that next generation of operators? If we build 10x operators, what does the next operator look like? All of this makes me think about Steve Austin. Uh, if you're not familiar with your 70s era TV, he was the bionic man. And the tagline was that we are going to build a better, stronger, faster man in, the, in response. Um, and the show had this, this 
augmented person who is able to be better, stronger, and faster than other people, but still relied on human instincts and observation. And I think this is a good analogy for what we're talking about. AI is a significant force multiplier, but how do we make better operators? Just having them have more tools, more bionics, doesn't necessarily make them a better operator. And so that has me going back to our original list. If we look at our surpluses and lacks, what does AI really fix? Now, some of these things it makes a tremendous job on. Documentation and tooling, definitely. Uh, reusability, validation, and linting. These things are really impacted immediately by generative DevOps techniques. We also can get a lot of lift if we use it to, take, to handle equipment types and vendors, deal with the var variations that we see, help us cope with backwards compatibility by leaving in systems and, or having, them, having it write backwards compatibility or, or rewrite things, and have us build more resilience into the system, handle air, edge conditions and error conditions uh, by having those in the code, right? We don't, won't feel as, comp as compelled to eliminate working code because we don't worry about whether or not that adds too much complexity. Some of that the AI can deal with. Really doesn't help us as much on the architecture or the shared state questions. Those are still in the human operator domain. And so I think it's worth understanding that when we look at what is a 10x operator, we're not saying that AI is automatically going to turn people into 10x operators. Just the opposite. What I believe is that the AIs are going to empower us to do the human parts of the job, right? Working with architectural patterns, establishing shared state pipelines, providing expertise in context, those human parts of the job, we might actually have time for them. We might actually free up our regular operators to do the work that builds this 10x system, to actually do the collaboration, do the communication, think about systems because we've now freed up the time from the toil of building scripts, writing scripts, translating scripts, figuring out how to use a script in a new situation that's only slightly different. All of these things are even more importantly finding that the script that they want already exists and then being confident that they can adapt it to their need or even better just use it as is and figure out how to fit it into their system. Those changes are enabling people to be the 10x operators because that's ultimately what we're empowering. AI is going to uh, bridge over these major obstacles but the only way that changes builds these 10x operators if we take that time and reinvest it into our systems and empower it. I do believe that that is a threat to the cloud providers that this type of available time and available expertise does bridge the moat and allows us to reconsider our infrastructure assumptions. I would be delighted to take your questions if this was helpful and insightful um, or you disagree with it. All of that, uh, this is really about sparking a conversation and thinking about how to become a better operator. I will tell you at RackN, we spend a lot of time thinking about how to empower operators to do more, to reuse the code they have, to take advantage of systems and reuse and collaboration, even when people don't realize that they are sharing and collaborating because uh, the libraries allow them to do that reuse. Um, these are things that we really think about very deeply. Building that 10x operator is our mission in as a, as a software company, creating that independence and allowing people to control their own destiny core to our company. Please contact us at racken.com and if you have more questions or observations, please do, do let me know. You can find me online. I'm at Rob Hirschfeld on LinkedIn. I'm Zeekel on most social media platforms. Thank you.